Hello, right, I thought I'd do this video for everyone thinking about buying uh, this lovely beast, the Sky Glass. Um, so, what you need to know, I've got some notes over here. So, the first thing, you know, I bought my Sky Glass on, it was a day one release. So, well, not day one, but it's, it's one of the first ones. Um, and delivery day. I was um, actually quite shocked. You can actually see it on my channel, um, me sort of setting it up after delivery. Um, they arrived, I think, probably just before midday. And it was literally a, a lady and a man. Um, they just come in an unmarked white van. I'm guessing that they subby for Sky. Um, and it's meant to be a two-man lift the tv this bloke walked down the drive or sort of semi run down the drive with it on its shut with it the sky glass on his shoulder and this is a massive box you can imagine how big this tv is and you're probably talking another four inches either side and all the way around maybe more so huge box pretty heavy damn tv and he just literally popped it in i didn't want him to set it up because to be quite honest, if he if he's lifting it in like that, um, I don't want him touching it at all. Um, so I unboxed it and I noticed that I, I thought the screen was going to be smashed. To be quite honest, if he's got it on his shoulder, um, there wasn't it wasn't smashed or damaged any way like that. It had glue line across the whole screen. I think it was about sort of there. Um, I think that might have been where he had it on his shoulder and it pressed against the actual sky glass. What can you do? You know, I just ended up cleaning it off. Took a little while. No damage on the screen whatsoever. I did think it was going to be a damaged screen and it would be sent back. Oh, the cat's just come in after the pouring rain. Um, so, yeah, wasn't an issue. I had it sat on a... Um, I've got like a bench... Desktop benchy thing there. It was sat on that for a little while. But where it's so heavy on the stand that it comes on it pressed into that and it's sort of um it wasn't great because <laughs> um it's wood it's quite heavy it it, it bent um it, it bent the sort of tv standy thing a little bit that much that the um the speakers on the side they weren't it wasn't touching the telly they were literally almost they are probably millimeters away from it so the Dolby Atmos and the, the sound sounded absolutely terrible because it's got down firing speakers here and here and sort of all the way around top bottom at the back for the Dolby Atmos it's just how it works so it sounded really crap I was going to put it on a wall mount anyway which is on now a majorly heavy duty wall mount I will put the link in the description for that below because it is an amazing wall mount you can pull it out different sorts of sides what's that Oh dear, <laughs> different sorts of size. You can even spin it round into portrait mode if you really want to. If that's what you want to do with your sky glass, not a thing I'd be doing, but bleh, yeah, something you can do. Um, day one, yes, unfortunately, Sky, they were one of these companies that um, used its customers for testing the tv uh testing all the bugs and everything out um a few companies do do this sony are very well known for doing it um sky i think this is probably their first time that i know that they've been doing it i mean even that sky live up there don't really use that um that's probably as good as the very first um connects bar on the xbox is probably a little bit worse to be quite honest it doesn't track as well as that it's not bad but it's okay um what else did i have the voice recognition um i didn't really use it on the remote control though it's not too bad that was pretty bad on the remote control it wasn't as good as it is now it's had updates and stuff like that but on the tv oh my god you could be shouting at it like talking to uh, another assistant when it seems like it can't hear you bloody really annoying now on the tv it just it, it was absolutely rubbish didn't work at all um it's okay now it's workable um ooh. and other con uh, problems that i had as well connection problems with the wi-fi which you still do get occasionally now when you turn it on um where it says not connected to the wi-fi and then you just press this home button and 
it just goes back to normal i don't understand it's like sky are trying to force you in well not force you but trying to make you use their broadband because they think it's better and it all connects i i i don't see why it would make any difference um buffering you got a lot of buffering in the first Oh, before there was any sort of updates or anything done, there was there was quite a lot of buffering all the time. Even though with a, a a speedy connection, it just wasn't great. And the apps, yeah, let's just say there's no uh, Alexa or any kind of assistant connection for this TV, so it's really crap for that. I, if they just had a skill where I could get everything the TV to turn off with everything else or turn on doesn't need to change channel or anything like that or maybe a volume control would be good but not that i've ever used that on uh, the voice assistant um it's it's bloody annoying you can you can do it with sky stream sort of because the handset you can you can get this to work on sky stream with your amp and stuff so you can turn it up and down your volume but if you've got a soundbar plugged into this through the eARC no you have to use your other remote control a really bad thing um it ships with eco mode as well for the picture and everything else so you do need to go into the picture uh, selection part and turn that off i've done a whole video on how to get um good picture quality or much better picture quality than what you get out of the box so when you first get it you'll think oh this isn't that great you know bloody bloody that's because the backlight's on eco mode and it um basically is almost all the way down um mine's almost all the way up which i still do find it quite bright i think it's on like 70 or 80 percent um if you crank it up to 100 it is way too bright way way too bright you are going to use a little bit more electric but i really don't think you're going to notice it that much um like i mentioned the e-arc is terrible for me it was for other people doesn't seem to be a a thing overall with everybody i think the newer tvs have probably got a slightly different sort of um e-arc system in there maybe a little slight tweak um because obviously this is a, a day one unit so it's going to have all the very first technology that was in it when it first come out um i have had blue i don't use a bluetooth anymore at all um it used to connect to my soundbar which the soundbar i've sort of moved away now because uh, the, the the e-arc and this that and the other and i was uh, it, it so i'm just not using it anymore it's being used for something else um i did have it connected with the bluetooth which is actually quite good because the remote control would do the volume up and down Aha. but sky brought it upon themselves to update the sky glass and to update the bluetooth bit so it wouldn't accept um mostly all sound bars being that higher quality soundbars it probably will still work with the cheaper stuff and rubbish you get off of amazon um obviously it works with headphones still you can do the volume up and down through this but my soundbar it just would not find and it's a it's a it's a good soundbar it's a dolby atmos soundbar <laughs> it's a good break um it's it was just really disappointing because uh the sound that came out of that was quite good but i mean the sound that i'm getting out of the tv now in 2024 is better than it was on launch i don't know what they've done there but the bass and everything i'm getting out of it is really really quite good um really really surprised i don't know if it's because it's the bigger model and maybe it's got some bigger speakers in there but it seems like they updated that so that's that's good and it does seem to throw the sound quite well which i was really surprised it didn't when i first got it i've not mucked around with the sound controls at all they're just left as standard um what else did i have yeah it, the arc doesn't have any support um for the amp at all really i would say i with the pass through and all this that and the other it just never seemed to work properly i know some of you sonos guys had issues with it and some of you didn't it, like i said I, I don't think it's an issue overall i just think it's some units um what else have i got down in my little notes over there i've done the uh, remote control thing with uh with uh sky glass and sky stream oh yeah 
early days, yeah, give me just a second. Early days, yeah. So, like I was saying, having to unplug it literally once a week because of loss of connection or some app or something's not working right on it. You used to have to do that all the time. Um, now, recently, I very rarely have to do it. They seem to have worked that out. Um, only if an app freezes, which you don't get a lot. I have noticed it on Netflix recently. It's the only time I've had an app absolutely completely freeze. Um, and... Yeah, back in the days, at least once once a week, once a month, it, it depended. Sometimes it was once a week, sometimes it was once a month. You had to unplug it, reboot it. You've got a reboot option in this now if the whole TV doesn't crash. Otherwise, you've got to actually unplug it. Um, actually, I found unplugging it to be a quicker boot up time after you've unplugged it. Don't know why. Don't know why rather than doing the the reboot thing through the remote and the option on the on the screen um maybe it's because it's got a it's closing stuff down whereas in if you unplug it normally when i unplug it i don't unplug it when it's turned on if i can turn it off if it's not buggered up that much i'll unplug it that way that's the safest way of doing it and unplugging it from the mains or flicking the little switch up is the best way not just doing it the way you've seen me doing it in the past by just unplugging it out the back i only do it that way because of all my cable management is a nightmare to get to um what else do i have right apps you don't need to buy the 4k subscription or the dolby atmos subscription if you're using your own netflix that's nothing to do with your um, subscription with sky any of the apps that have nothing to do with subscription through sky um will play 4k will play dolby atmos or whatever unfortunately the tv doesn't tell you if it's playing dolby atmos it doesn't have a little thing saying dolby atmos blah blah or um dolby vision blah blah like literally every other tv does which is a bit bit annoying you can't tell really you just have to hope that it's doing it one of those things um yes this is a very good point. When it ships, your remote control ships with the standard batteries. And you can use these for a little while, but what I do, I use rechargeable batteries, ones that will not leak because the standard ones in here, you use them a lot or your remote control a lot, they will leak and ruin the remote control because a lot of people say, oh, you press the, this button and it does something else on the sky glass that is because the batteries have leaked out inside and corroded bits and pieces inside the actual remote control um now i've not had any problems with mine because i switched out my batteries pretty pretty soon pretty quick to remote uh, remote control ones no rechargeable ones which generally don't leak um I also did a little cheeky and I said that I went online and said that my remote control doesn't work and I've got a spare set up on the shelf over there. Um, so I recommend getting those batteries out as quick as possible. Use some de decent, half decent rechargeables. Um, they tend to last quite a long time as well. Right. What do we have on here? Right. <coughs> gaming. It's not the best for gaming, <coughs> but it's OK. It's, it's all right for gaming. Um, I used to be a Twitch streamer a long time ago. I've probably <clears throat> been an online gamer for 29 years from the start of um, when the Xbox original started live. I used to go online by tunneling before that because you could do that and it's sort of seen as a um, like as if you're in the same room plugging two Xboxes in together. Um, that worked quite well um, so I've been gaming from then and uh, back then the TVs were horrible and terrible anyway so nowadays with all the 100 hertz and the 144 hertz you spoil for choice I recommend if you're doing that get yourself a gaming monitor and sit nice and close to it a nice curved 32 be lovely to game on um, but if you're just going to be your average gamer absolutely fine there's no issues with it at all um well i don't on the 65 i don't know if the smaller models suffer any differently but on the 65 there's no no issues at all and the same with watching fo uh, sport football and stuff cracking picture it's obviously like 
it's not the best screen in the world, but all these technology companies try to s sell you all of this sort of, oh, it's got the latest this, it's got the latest that. To be quite honest, you're not going to notice when you get home with all the different lighting and stuff you've got in your room. If if you're if you've got like a patio like I have, um, beaming light through there, I've got a blackout blind there, so it's not a problem. And um, you get all going. Everyone is going to get different situations where the TV is going to look different. Different makes are going to look different. It's just personal choice how you set up the screen and all that sort of uh, jazz and how you like your image. So different TVs might appear nicer to you. Um, I like, I mean, personally, I prefer an LG panel and I like the way it's more sort of a natural um, sort of looking panel. And LG have the best panels for not getting any screen burn. There's videos online on YouTube about that. Um, I've not noticed any screen burn. That's why you see me keep flicking it up and down just in case. Um, issues with this, basically it is a Samsung panel, a QLED panel, I believe. I can't remember, but obviously there's nano stuff and everything now, but that is all gimmicky to get you to buy the TVs. Um, this is absolutely fine for me. It's nice and bright. The, the um, contrast ratio for me, absolutely fine. Uh, it's got Dolby Vision. It's got Dolby Atmos what more do you need it's fairly cheap you can i'm not sure if they still do it where you can do it on a, a credit agreement thing or you can buy it outright whichever it doesn't matter um right yes sky glass is not a smart tv this is the i, I have noticed that they seem to have dropped that in their ads now um because unless you have a Sky subscription, you lose all of your apps, everything. Uh, you'd have to plug a HDMI um, Fire Stick or Fire Cube or whatever you've got in the back of it to make it smart again. Sorry about that disturbance. But anyway, I'll try and cut it out, but I might not be able to. Um, yeah, not, not smart at all. It's just a regular TV. Um, it becomes smart when it's connected to Sky and Sky servers. Now, originally in launch with these TVs, if you bought one second hand, you would have to make sure that um, it had been paid off and there was no subscription and everything on there. Um, I actually believe that they didn't, Sky wouldn't... Um, sell you a subscription to use the tv i think there was a big issue with it all then but now what you have to do is you need to make sure the subscription on the tv that you've bought from whoever has been paid off in full and the tv is paid off in full um because if you want to have a uh, sky subscription on that if you want to add it on there with sky they will do it just so long as that previous person has paid off that balance. Um, uh, a bit like an iPhone. So if you buy, if you buy like an iPhone 15 now that someone's just bought and they've decided to buy it to make a profit and just sell it on and not pay for that, give it about a year, that iPhone will become blacklisted and uh Apple, it might even be less than that now. It might be six months. Apple, uh, the, your phone company will contact Apple. I think they've got a digital system and they put the IME in there and they put it onto the Apple database and Apple press a button, boom, um, your phone is blacklisted. I think it's blacklisted, something like that. Um, so basically it still work. It still work on Wi-Fi, but it will not receive um, a mobile connection from like uh, um timo or not t-mobile don't exist anymore virgin media um o2 any it won't work whatsoever only your your wi-fi works so you'll be basically it's not worth having no, no 5g no 4g no nothing um so that is basically how it'd work with them but they won't turn it off they just won't let you have a subscription because that other person has been naughty and not paid everything off um that's about it i mean at the moment, with all the new OS and all the updates, there's not many problems that you're going to get with the Sky Glass. Um, I do know my one of my other friends, which I haven't spoken to him for a long, long time. Um, his channel is doing really, really well. Um, he had an issue with the speakers. 
I'm using my speakers now. I'm hoping I don't get that issue. If I do, I'm going to be just go back to the soundbar, even though I do have Sky Protect, I think, on this. Um, I don't think it's going to be worth me swapping the whole unit out because it's a big TV, depending on if it's going to be. If it's going to be a new unit, not a refurbed unit from Sky Glass, then yes, I would. A refurbed unit, no, I wouldn't, because that could just come with inherent problems that this tv doesn't have i don't have many issues apart from the silly little niggly ones that i wish sky would sort out like letting this remote control control other devices like sound bars and amps because the um sky stream one does and it's exactly the same remote there's no difference in this whatsoever um and obviously the e arc so i mean maybe they've sorted that out in newer the newer ones that come off the line that are being built but that's just it so feel you know if you're thinking about buying it and you were worried look at this video this this there is no problems with this tv at the moment it does what it's meant to do it's a great if you're into the sky thing it's an on-demand sort of service you can't record on it um but it works for me it, it does work for me everything's on there that you need if you've got subscriptions with Disney, Netflix and all that. It's basically all you really need. Um, there's no need to do for doing recording stuff anymore. The on-demand has taken over, unfortunately. And it's just the way it is. And unfortunately, sort of uh, subscribing to everything else as well, which is a real pain in the bum because something shouldn't really have subscriptions. But that's what it is. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe.